Blessings in Yah and Yahushua HaMashiach. This is Salt and Light, your voice for biblical encouragement and teaching from the word of Yah. Let us as followers of Yahushua be the salt and the light, as in Matthew 5, 13 through 16. This is where truth is shared and discussed, so you and the body may be encouraged and challenged and grow together. I pray everyone is safe and well. For those who are new to this podcast, welcome. For those who are returning, welcome back. It's great to have you. So online is available on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Please visit our pages on social media where the links are found to take you to the website, as well as the Patreon link to give and support um, the work of this ministry as the Adon leads. We bless and thank you. We are available on Google Podcasts, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, Spotify, Podbean, Stitcher, Deezer, Buzzsprout, and many more. So and Light comes to you from the Elite You app. Don't forget to subscribe to so Salt and Light channel on YouTube as well and give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Please like and share the link. Please visit us at Salt and Light Art on Facebook group page as well as YouTube for other ministry work where you can see pics, reels of past and upcoming paintings and art projects. Your support helps reach more people for the kingdom of Elohim and to level up as a podcast and to grow this ministry. Once again, thank you for your support and your prayers. We all need each other right now. Be blessed. And we pray, Lord, for Shalom in the name of Yahushua. I love you all. Praise Yah. So welcome. Welcome to yet another episode of Salt and Light. Um, uh, I pray everyone had a blessed week. Um, I pray for peace and Shalom. Uh, and uh, just keep me in your prayers. I was feeling a little under the weather um, yesterday. So, um, you know, started feeling it like late Friday night. So um, pray everyone had a blessed Shabbat. If you go to Shabbat on Saturdays, um, it was a blessing. The word was a blessing. And uh, we are continuing to count the Omer um, from the time again from Passover to uh, to Pentecost was referred to as Pentecost Shavuot. Um, today is day forty five, um, so we're we're really close. Uh, actually, Shavuot is this Friday, uh, May twenty six. So praise Yah for that. And uh, yesterday was the Jewish New Moon, so Rosh Chodesh, um, and you know it was a blessing. Um, as we continue to, again, count the Omer, um, let us prepare our hearts and our minds for the outpouring of the Ruha HaKadosh, right, um, for the Holy Spirit. Um, let us just be prepared um, and, and just be expectant of, of his presence um, um, and us, you know, just his people being blessed and uh, coming together as well uh, in unity. So. Uh, last week we just uh, we spoke on again just fleshing out a little bit more of Constantine the vision of Constantine. We spoke a little bit about the history of the cross symbol um, and the Tau cross and all of these things. So um, again, just I always say, just feel feel free to disagree with you know what what uh, what Yah just continues to give me. Um, and revelation and all of these things. So um, again, it's a coming out of a lot of things, even for my wife and I, just unlearning a lot of things that um, we have been taught through the years and, and just for mainstream Christianity and all of these things um, and just, right, um, living out our faith. But um, I just want to just put this caveat right here. If, we, if our foundation is tainted, then right our doctrines and everything else might be off so we got to make sure our foundation is right um and for for years and years and years our foundation was not right um so it took us it took well just a revelation right you know just waiting on 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 yahuwah to show us these things and he will but um our hearts need to be open our minds need to be uh uh renewed that's what the word says right so and our hearts to prepare to to um, be prepared to receive these things um years ago we weren't ready we weren't at that point to receive these things um so most likely if the holy spirit was showing it to us we didn't see it because we weren't prepared yet um it wasn't the season for it um 
you know, there could be so many reasons. But anyway, I just want to say that just to lay some groundwork, because again, you know, my wife and I are learning so much um, and, and we're blessed by it, uh, you know, but again, just um, a lot of it is, is also could bring isolation, could bring, um, that's why it's important to have to be in unity, not not uniformity, but to be in unity with like-minded believers, um, because you could be isolated uh, even from um, other brothers and sisters because they may not share your views on certain things. Um, but but definitely from your family members and 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 things like that, coworkers. Um, you know, you may even be hated, but Yahusha said you'd be hated for my for his namesake. Um, you know, so in that respect, you know, um, it may not feel good, you know, but if you are being persecuted or hated or ostracized for living out your faith in Yahusha, then you are blessed. So that's just an encouragement. You are blessed. It may not feel like it. But we have to go by what the word says. We, we can't go by our feelings and our emotions. So um, it's not about being hated because, you know, you're a jerk or something like that. Right. Because we don't want to actively <laughs> we don't want to just be that, um, you know, to to another person. Um, we want to speak in love and share the love of of Elohim to those around us. Um, but it's, a, it's more about being hated because you're living out your faith um, and that will happen, you know, so just prepare yourselves for that as you live, you know, for him, as you're separated unto him um, and, and consecrated and, and hopefully, you know, in time, you know, there's sanctification that happens, there's maturity, there's growth, you know, so I just, uh, you know, I just pray that someone was encouraged by that, you know, because I'm I'm continually being encouraged, you know. Um, you know, and again, it may not feel feel good, like right when you're going through certain things or or when someone is is um or you might feel isolated or something like that. It may it doesn't feel good, but just take heart what and what um the word says, right? We have to just again stand on out stand on the word and stand on the truth right so and and all of these things right so i just pray that, again that um that was an encouragement and we're just going to get into um last episode again we just spoke a little bit about constantine and and even the episode before that a couple weeks ago was how paganism mixed with christianity and all of these things so the Ruha HaKadosh is just leading me just down down that road, you know, just to give a little bit more context. Um, last week, we, I'm, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I spoke about this word called um, secretism, um, blend, which is blending and melding, uh, uniting of different religions, cultures, or schools of thought. Secretism. So you can look it up, S-Y-N-C-R-E. T I S M. Um, and then next week, Yah willing, we'll speak about Hellenization. I think I mentioned it la in last in the last episode. Uh, Hellenization, which is the Greek influence on the culture, um, uh, culture in all walks of life, and spheres of influence, even even in the modern day church. So, um, just just mark that in your understanding: secularism and Hellenization. Um, this week we'll be talking about paganism and what is a pagan. You know, I think that's really important in, to to mark in our understanding um, regarding these things. Because even speaking about how pa paganism mixed with Christianity, you have to first understand what is a pagan. You know, and all of these things have that in 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 your understanding from a biblical perspective. Um, you know, and then obviously just. If when you do your research, you know, what are primary sources, you know, secondary sources and so on and so forth. So what, which sources, what primary sources should be trustworthy um, or where you're getting your information. So um, let me just say that also last week I spoke about the cross. Um, um, it is not so much about whether it was a cross, right? We spoke about whether it was a traditional cross as we always see it depicted. 
um, that Yahushua was crucified on. You know, was it a cross? Was it a pole? Was it a stake? Right? That really doesn't matter in 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 the grand scheme of things. But um, what really matters was that he was in fact crucified. He was sacrificed in our place to redeem us back to the Father, to the to the Most High Elohim, our Creator. So that that's the most important thing. You know, I just want to just mentioned that you know we we can go on and uh, was it a stake was it a cross and all of these things and um just for us not to be led again by um you know doctrines and, and and things like that but at the end of the day that really doesn't matter either we can really nobody really knows we we weren't around during those times right so what matters is that he was crucified and that he rose to life and he that he is alive right and uh he's coming back for his community uh, for his assembly so let us be prepared and again that's what really matters so um so we we'll just dive into uh what is a pagan um today we will wrestle with that you know what is a pagan what is paganism um and to just be aware of arrogance and pride you know uh, um and people that may be operating in that above coming into being rooted in the truth. We need to be rooted in the truth. Again, you need to, it's not about this ministry. It's not about, you know, anything that I have to say. It's about what the father is saying to you through the Ruha HaKadosh. Read your Bibles for yourself, you know, um, um, read, pray daily, you know, um, um, should be praying multiple times a day. Um, and, and, you know, just communing with him and being, again, rooted in the truth um, uh, and understanding biblical truth. People today desire a quick one minute truth. You know, that's why you see on YouTube and Instagram, a lot of these reels, what they call reels. And this world thinks um, truth is subjective, depending on what side of the fence you are on. The real truth is not subjective. Um, it's, you know, all of these things are claims and lies depending on how you understand truth, you know? And um, I'm just taking the scripture in 2 Timothy 4, verses 3 and 4. Uh, again, I'm, I'm reading from, uh, I just recently got a, a TLV version of the Bible, the Tree of Life. Um, it's, it's a pretty good Bible. It, it does say God, um, but it, it, doesn't, it doesn't say Jesus or Jesus Christ, it does say Yahushua the Messiah, or Yahushua HaMashiach, but, um, and it does have some, um, replace, replaces the names of a lot of, you know, people in, in the Bible, um, um, even in the New, New Testament um, scriptures. Um, but it does say God, uh, but it does, it does not say Holy Spirit, it says Ruha HaKadosh, um, and, and just other things. It's a pretty good Bible. Um, I, I like it. You know, um, so I'm just going to be reading from that today. Again, 2 Timothy 4, verses 3 and 4. For the time will come when they will not put up with sound instruction, but they will pile up from themselves teachers in keeping with their own desires to have their ears tickled. And they will turn away from hearing the truth and wander off to myths. So, you know, so again, you know, people just, you know, you can find a teacher basically to tell you anything to, to, to tickle your, your ears. Um, you will, you will not find any problem whatsoever in finding a channel or some teacher or teaching about um, that Christmas is not pagan, that Easter is not pagan when it is. So. It's just things that if we're not ready to receive it, we won't want to hear the truth. So we start searching and being led astray by thinking, oh, no, here's this video. Here's this of, of, of that Christmas is not pagan. But, right, they twist the scriptures, you know, um, they isolate scripture. Um, and they don't have a real understanding of, of the scriptures regarding, regarding those things, regarding those traditions of men. So, so it's the truth according to scripture with the community, right? 
are to be set apart. We as the community are to be set apart from the world. The devil has brought so much confusion. And just because also there's a lack of education, it's just indoctrinations and the gaps are filled in by mainstream thought and traditions of men um, that confuse the masses. This is so far from the truth. Uh, when you look in a dictionary, uh, even uh, the Oxford Dictionary of what a pagan is, the, dic the, the meaning that they have in there is a person holding religious beliefs other than those of the main or recognized religions. If this is how you understand a pagan, uh, this is what you understand a pagan to be, and this is how you understand it, then this is wrong. That is a, a wrong definition. Um, this definition leaves a lot of information out. So in order to really understand what a pagan is, um, a lot of people have that just erroneous um, understanding of what a pagan is because they, they go by that definition of what the dictionary says a pagan is without really understanding. So to really understand, we have to go back to ancient Israel. Um, this is by no means an all exhaustive, uh, uh, you know, account of, of it. But that's why I say read your Bibles for yourself. Um, go back, study, um, research, you know, as, as the Ruha HaKadosh leads, you know, if you have questions, even after listening to this, um, to this episode, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm also learning, um, uh, and things like that. I, I research, um, I listen to, to other people who are influential or, you know, influential in, in, uh, as far as being a brother or sister, right. And understanding the scriptures for themselves. And I pray on it and, and I, you know, receive what, what is to be received. You know, we also need to understand you can't just swallow everything, every, uh, you can't swallow everything hook, line and sinker. You know, you have to test the spirits to see whether they are of God, you know? So, but again, going back to ancient Israel, we have to look at, um, we have to look at it through the lens of ancient Israel, right? The covenant was passed from Abraham. I spoke about that in the, uh, when I did the series on the, the prophetic and prophecy and end times and all of these things. And um, um, Abraham was one, one of them. Um, I spoke on Ezekiel, I spoke on Abraham, the Abrahamic covenant. Right, so that was passed to Isaac, then Jacob, right, and the, which is the line of Shem. Then later, which is obviously Jacob, later renamed Israel. Jacob had twelve sons, which are the twelve tribes of of Israel. Yasharel dwelt in the land of Egypt because of the because of their brother Joseph. Pharaoh then enslaved them, and Yahweh displayed his power to the rest of the world. Through that, we all know the accounts of of how he used. Moses and his brother Aaron to deliver the people out of the hand of Pharaoh out of the uh, and led them out of the land of Egypt. So to understand what a pagan is, we need to understand Egypt. So you need to go back even further and uh, from an Israelite view of the world, which Israelites viewed of, of the world was other nations, right? It was Israel who had a covenant with the one true God, Yahuwah or Yah, and other nations. So it was Israel and other nations. That's it. Israel and other nations. So basically Israel and everyone else, everyone else in the world. In the Bible, they're referred to by different names, such as heathens, strangers, foreigners, or Gentiles. This was how it was divided. Hebrews or Israelites were known by the size and strength of their God. They weren't known by who they were per se. They were known by their God the God in whom they served. So the world was split up by different tribes. At that time, Egypt was the main empire of the world, right? A major um, um, pagan empire. Many different tribes spread throughout the world from what happened at the Tower of Babel in Genesis. As far as religion goes, worship of their God, small g, was no different. All practiced their own version of their own religion, right? Only thing that separated them was their tongues and languages. This is what um, Yah did. These people were at one time worshiping the same God, and they attempted to challenge Yahweh. That's, that's what the Tower of Babel account was all about. 
So Yahuwah confused their languages and people were not no longer in the same accord any longer. They were all dispersed. Yasharel served only one God. Right? And we see that in, um, let's go here, in Deuteronomy 1 through 8. Deuteronomy chapter 1, 1 through 8. And these are the words that Moses spoke to all Israel across the Jordan in the wilderness. In Abba, opposite soup between Paran and Zobo, Laban and Tezabah. It is 11 days journey from Horeb by Mount Seir to Kadesh Barnera. Now Moses spoke to the men of the sons of Israel according to all Adonai had commanded him for them in the 40th year in the 11th month on the first day of the month after he had struck down Shion, king of the Aramites, who lived in Heshbon, and Og, king of the Bashan, who lived in Asher and Idia. Right. Across the Jordan in the land of Moab, Moses began to explain this Torah, saying, Adonai, our God, spoke to us at Horeb, saying, You have stayed long enough at this mountain. Turn, journey on, and enter the hill country of the Amorites and all their neighbors in the Abra, the hill country, the lowland, the Negev, and by the seashore, the land of the Canaanites and the Lebrion, as far as the great river, the Euphrates. See, I have set up the land before you, Enter and possess the land that Adam and I swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give to them and to the descendants after them. Praise Yah. So then afterwards, uh, Moses and Aaron went before Pharaoh. Right? And that's in, that's in Exodus. Exodus chapter 5, verses 1 through 3. Afterward, Moses and Aaron went and said to Pharaoh, this is what Adonai, God of Yasharel, says, let my people go so that they may hold a feast for me in the wilderness. But Pharaoh said, who is Adonai, that I should listen to his voice and let Israel go? I do not know Adonai, and besides, I will not let Israel go. And they answered, the God of the Hebrews had met with us. Please let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness so we may sacrifice to Adonai our God or with the sword. So praise Yah. See, so and pagan followers, they follow a trinity, a three God structure, a father God, son God, which is mother goddess, and the son of God, which is a reborn son God, a small and smaller demigods, depending upon the, the cultures. Their gods are slightly different. So when we look at the Egyptians, the world-known pagan empire, their ultimate god was the father of all creation. is Ra, R-A. Ra was the god of the sun, small g. And they, pagan, they, they served a pagan trinity. Father god was Osiris, mother goddess was Isis, and their son was Horus. So that's, a, again, a pagan trinity. Isis uh, was around two different themes of surrounding her, the first moon, uh, the first moon, and also um, fertility. There was a father god, Osiris, which is also known, uh, he was known as the king of the dead of the or the underworld. Then they have divine, a vine, divine child, Horus, after see them, uh, and often see them depicted in statues or, or pictures with the sun uh, in their lap, which is also like Madonna, Madonna and child. The divine child is the reborn sun god, Horus, born December 21st, known as the winter solstice. People say these things have nothing to do with the Bible. These people are either trying to deceive you or are deceived themselves. Um, and these, because these things are mentioned in the Bible, the Israelites were commanded to not follow the ways of the pagans. Um, They were commanded not to follow the ways of the pagans. They were commanded to be set apart. They were supposed to be set apart and different. So we see that in, in Deuteronomy chapter 12, verses 29 to 32. When Adonai, your God, cuts off before you the nations that are going into dispossess, when you have dispossessed them and settled in their land, be careful not to be trapped into imitating them after they have been destroyed before you. Do not inquire about their gods, saying, how do these nations serve their gods? I will do the same. 
You are not to act like this toward Adonai your God. For every abomination of Adonai, which he hates, they have done to their gods. They even burned their sons and daughters in the, in the fire to their gods. That was Deuteronomy chapter 12, verses 29 through 32. Now we see in, um, so be careful not to observe it and do not add to it or take away from it, meaning the word. Other nations were pagan. They were, had many different customs and ways of which they celebrated their gods, which Yahweh hates. But we go to 2 Kings chapter 17, verses 6 to 23. Verse 17, in the ninth year, Hoshe, the king of Israel, captured Samaria. The king of uh, Kachamara deported the Israelites to Assyria. He placed them in Raha and Haba on the Gozem River in the towns of the Medes. Now it was so because the men of Israel had sinned against Adonai, their God, who brought them up out of the land of Egypt, for under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had feared other gods. Instead, they followed the customs of the nations, which Adonai had dispossessed before the, before the sons of Israel, yet which the kings of Israel practiced. Um, the sons of Israel secretly did things against Adonai, their God, that were not right. They built shrines for themselves in all their settlements, from watchtowers to fortified cities, and they set up pillars and astral poles for themselves on every high hill and under every leafy tree. There they burned incense on all the high places, like the nations whom Adonai had driven out before them. So they did wicked things to provoke Adonai. They worshiped idols, about which Adonai had said to them, you shall not do this thing. Yet Adonai had forewarned Israel and Judah by the hand of every prophet and every seer, saying, Turn from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes, according to all the Torah which I commanded your fathers, and which I sent to you by the hand of my servants, the prophets. Yet they would not listen, but stiffened their neck like their father, like their fathers who did not trust in Adonai their God. So they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he had made with their fathers and his testimonies that he testified against them. Instead, they went out to futile things and became futile, following the nations that surrounded them, about whom Adonai had charged them not to emulate. So they abandoned all the mitzvot um, of Adonai their God. So they made for themselves molten images, two calves, and made an astral pole, and bowed down to all the host of heavens, and worshipped Baal. And they made their sons and daughters pass through the fire, practiced divination and enchantments, and sold themselves to do evil and Adonai's eyes to provoke him. So Adonai became very angry with Yasharel and banished them from his presence. There was none left but the tribe of Judah alone. Even Judah did not keep the mitzvah of Adonai their God, but followed the customs which Yasharel had practiced. So Adonai spurned all the descendants of Yasharel and then afflicted them and delivered them into the hand of plunderers until he cast them out of his sight. When he had torn Yasharel from the house of David, they made Jeroboam son of Nebat king, then Jeroboam drew Israel away from following Adonai and made them commit a great sin. The men of Yasharel kept walking in all the sins that Jeroboam committed. They did not turn away from them until Adonai banished Yasharel from his presence as he spoke by the hand of all his servants, the prophets. So Yasharel had been exiled from their own land to it, Assyria to this day. Okay, so that was again in 2 Kings chapter 17, verses 6 to 23. Well, see here in um, Jeremiah, see, right here, chapter 32, Jeremiah chapter 32, verses 31 through 35. It says, indeed, this city has caused my anger and my fury from the day that they built it up to this day, so that I will remove it from before my face, because all the evil the children of Yasharel and the children of Judah had done to provoke me. They, their kings, their princes, their Kodeshim, their prophets, the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. They turned their back to me and not their face, though I taught them early and often, they have not listened to receive instruction. Instead, they set up their abominations in the house where my name is called to defile it. They built the high places of Baal in the valley of Ben-Hinnon, to make their sons and their daughters pass through fire to Molech, something I never commanded them, nor did it enter my mind that they would do this lonesome, lonesome thing, causing Judah to sin. Again, that was Jeremiah chapter 32, 
verses 31 through 35. Right, so we look here in Ezekiel chapter 8, verses 13 and 14. It says here, he said further to me, you will still, you will see still greater abominations that they are doing. He brought me to the door of the gate of Adonai's house, which was toward the north. Behold, the woman sat there weeping for Tammuz. He said to me, have you seen this, son of man? You will again see even greater abominations than these. So again, uh, that was Ezekiel chapter 8, verses 13 and 14. And we'll just touch up upon that, what, who is Tammuz. Um, then we go to Judges. Judges. Um, Judges chapter 10, verses 6 and 7. Then the sons of Israel again did what was evil in Adonai's eyes. They worshipped the, ba the Balaam, the Asherah, the gods of Aram, gods of Zenon, gods of Moab, gods of the children of Ammon, and gods of the Philistines. They abandoned Adonai and did not worship him. So Adonai's anger burned against Jasherel, and he sold them over into the hand of the Philistines and into the hand of the children of Ammon. So again, that was Judges chapter 10, verses 6 through 7. So again, there's father gods, you know, regarding the pagans, father gods, mother gods, the Baals, and the Astrias. The Canaanites, they had their gods, which is Baal, which is the sun god, which the equivalent of that was Ra. And Astria, which is the moon goddess, whose equivalent also was Isis, and Tammuz, the equivalent of the reborn sun god Horus. The Israelites did not obey Yah and began to serve other gods and idols. So pagan traditions, traditions that the other nations that were not Israel and how they worship their gods. So in Jeremiah, we look at Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 16 and 18. Verses. For as, as for you, do not pray for this people. Do not offer any supplication or petition for them, nor entreat me, because I will not hear you. Do not do you not see what they are doing in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood, the fathers light the fire, and the women knead the dough to make sacrificial cakes to the Queen of Heaven. Moreover, they pour out drink offerings to other gods in order to prov provoke me to anger. But I am the one they are provoking, declares Adonai. Are they not vexing themselves to their own shame? So that was Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 16 through 19. So again, just provoking um, Adonai to, to anger by going after other gods, by doing these things. Um, so we go to Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 2 and 4. Hear the word that Adonai, these are, again, regarding idols, they and, and how they are worthless scarecrows. Hear the word that Adonai speaks to you, house of Yasharel. Thus says Adonai, do not learn the ways of the nations or be frightened by signs of the heavens, though the nations are terrified by them. The customs of the peoples are useless. It is a is just a tree cut from the forest, the work of the hand of the craftsman with a chisel. They decorate it with silver and gold and fasten it with hammer and nails so it won't totter. Like a scarecrow in a cucumber garden, their idols cannot speak. They must be carried because they cannot walk. Do not fear them, for they can do no harm, nor do any good. So that was Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 2 to 5. I read verses 2 to, two to 5, chapter 10. Um, but again, you know, all of these things were prophesied. So again, Rome and the sun god Sol Evictus and the Roman equivalent to the Greek god Helios, which is the sun god, their equivalent is the sun god, um, and Apollo and the sky god. You know, uh, mother goddess was Diana and the sky god was Zeus. And also um, Leto, right? And, and, and the mother goddess was also Artemis. 
Um, so after the Egyptians, there was the Babylonian and Assyrian empires. The sun gods also had different names. The, in Babylon, it was Marduk, and the mother goddess was Assyria or Asher. Uh, for Assyria, it was Asher, and was um, Ishtar, and the sun god was Tammuz. Um, worshippers of ancient Babylonian religion celebrated the conception not birth, but the conception of Tammuz on the first Sunday after the full moon that followed the spring, spring equinox. How he, how he, That's how we got the date Easter. Um, again, Roman pagan trinity, which was also uh, father God was Jupiter, mother goddess was Diana, and the son of God was Apollo. So all in and, and, and pagan um, customs and traditions, they all had altars, they all had fires, which they, again, passed the, uh, their children through with the fire, um, to the fire, and the customs, ancestor worship. The Egyptians, um, also when you look at Egyptian culture, uh, the Egyptians built tombs. They believed in the afterlife, or, or when you talk, start to research Osiris again, we mentioned Osiris, and which is also uh, how you uh, look at Hades. Uh, Hades, uh, which is the god, small g, of the underworld, um, and just how the Egyptians were obsessed with worship of their dead, right? And then you have the Greek, um, the hierarchy of gods. Um, in the Egyptians, people contact these gods, or which are actually really demons uh, of the underworld. Um, also, they just use a lot of objects as well. That's how also we get apotis, um, which believe strongly in heroes and demigods, Um and that is the dividing line between Yah and men and how some men, you know, regarded as heroes become divine, if you will. Um, and that's how also in these pagan uh, traditions and, and you hear about astrology and, and zodiac signs. And also it's that is also a big part of paganism uh, and pagans adopted their calendar around the sun. They adapted their calendar around the sun. They follow the sun god. They follow a solar-based calendar um, as different from what Yah instructed. The Hebrews follow, follow a lunar calendar. They went by cycles of the moon, which is a new moon, which is a full moon, is how we start a month. The pagans or heathens were different only to Israel. Um, everything that's found in the Bible is the history, doctrine, the prophecy of all that made the children of, of Israel. Right? Um, Everything that's found in the Bible is the history, the doctrine, the prophecy of all that made the children of Israel. The only people um, to have a covenant with, with Yahuwah, the Most High, our Creator. We are to be separate from other nations. Again, so our understanding shouldn't be around the Oxford Dictionary of what a pagan is. Um, that brings confusion. Um, what we should understand a pagan to be is an individual born outside the nation of Israel who was lawless, which means without law. They worshiped many gods. They, had, they believed and they worshiped in the Trinity of Father God, Mother God, and, and Son of God, and a lot of smaller gods. They, were, they had no rules or laws. They were free to worship their gods as they saw fit, much like today, even among organized religions and mainstream Christianity. And it was a blending of different customs and practices and all of these things. So, you know, again, they worshipped many, many gods. Okay. Um, again, when we look at Deuteronomy chapter 12, verses 29, 32, says, When Adonai your God cuts off from before you the nations, that you are going in to dispossess when you have dispossessed them and settled in their land. Be careful not to be trapped into imitating them after they have been destroyed before you. Do not inquire about their gods, saying, how do these nations serve their gods? I will do the same. You are not to act like this toward Adonai your God. For every abomination of Adonai, which he hates, they have done to their gods. They even burn their sons and daughters in the fire to their gods. So, again, just like... Uh, you know, a reminder, and we have in Exodus, I think I mentioned it before, Exodus chapter 5, afterward Moses and Aaron went and said to Pharaoh, this is what Adonai God of Yasharel says, let my people go, so that they may hold a feast for me in the wilderness. 
But Pharaoh said, Who is Adonai? I should listen to his voice and let Israel go. I do not know Adonai, and besides, I will not let Israel go. They answered, The God of the Hebrews has met with us. Please let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness so we may sacrifice to Adonai our God, or else he may strike us with pestilence or with the sword. So then we have all these things, and I know it was a lot when you study you know, that's why it's always important to go back to the beginning, go back in history. You start with the Egypt, the Egyptians, and then you get into like, you know, the Babylonians, the Assyrians, uh, Rome, and they all have different names for their small G gods, right? They have, uh, again, Diana, Artemis, Maduk, uh, uh, Ra, you know, the sun god, but in understanding how in paganism they have their trinity, which again, as we mentioned, is father god, mother goddess, and son of god. It's all small g's. And how different cultures call their na- their, their, their gods by different names. But basically, it's the same concept. You know, it's, it's, it's an unholy trinity, of course. It's not rooted in the word. It's paganism. And um, the only... Again, the understanding of, of, if you look at the dictionary um, meaning of pagan, then that that by by that very definition, Israel would have been pagan because they didn't follow many gods. They followed one god, you know. So by that very definition, they would be known as pagan. But we know that to be false because they did follow one true god. Um, even though there were, of course, many, as we read, that were started to imitate the ways of the pagans and doing all of the customs and things that were abominable in the sight of Yah, right? He detested them. He hates them. He hates those practices. Um, so again, that ties into everything that, you know, we have been speaking about. How, why is it that we still, again, large in part, you know, uh, uh, mainstream Christianity, mainstream thought, um, and uh, regarding even when we spoke about the Roman, um, uh, the the calendar of the that the pagans have adapted uh, to is worshiping their son. He came as a fulfillment of the law. Yahushua came. Uh, he he never said to do away with the law. So that's a whole big um, debate. Um, law versus grace and all of these things. There's quite a bit of scripture to go through um, regarding these things. And just again, how, you know, many people, even believers included, definitely believers, because we know the scripture, or at least we should know the scripture. We tend to isolate scripture, a lot of us, and, and, you know, take it out of context to fit our own ideologies or understanding of the word. Um, you know, even regarding Paul and and not to observe, the, you know, the uh, Sabbath or, or, or these things or festivals or new moons or anything like that. Um, so we'll, we'll get into things like that. It, you know, it is a lot regarding that. Um, and again, I always say it's a matter of personal conviction. You know, um, this is where we're being led right now. Um, but again, it's a heart condition as well. It's not that we have to do these things, but we get to do these things in obedience to, to the father, in obedience to the father, you know, and, and um, as we follow Yahushua and study his word and learn more and more, you know, and guided by, of course, the Ruha HaKadosh, you know, but one thing I will say is doing these things is not works. So if you're, again, it's a heart condition. If you're doing these things out of works and, you know, being legalistic, then yes, that's error. If you believe that doing these things, you know, um, um, is contingent upon salvation. In other words, that if you don't do these things, you're not saved. That's huge error. You know, that's huge error. You know, so that's definitely, you, you wouldn't want to have that in, in your understanding. And you wouldn't want to be part of a body that ascribes to that or believes in that. You know, we are saved by grace through faith. 
It's just that these things and people who talk about freedom in Yahusha, they 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 think that that means or somehow in their understanding that is freedom from the law. You know that we don't have to observe all these things in these ordinances or whatever, whatever. And and it's like that's not really what it means. Um, freedom in Yahusha and, and, and being redeemed and all that. Um, um, he hasn't freed us from the law in that sense. Um, but that's what they take it to mean, um, and and all of these things. We're free in Messiah to observe these things, not to not observe these things. If that makes any sense, you know. So it's like mm, you know, uh, but some you know many just believe, just worship him how you want to worship him. But is that really the truth? Is that really what it says in the Bible? Just worship him how you want to worship him and. Everything will work out in the end, you know. You have to walk by faith, you know. It's like, mm, yes, we have to walk by faith, but what does the word say regarding these things? What do Yahushua, his disciples, believe, right? So when we talk about the whole split from Judaism and Christianity, and another misconception, or you know, uh, contextually, even with the uh, scriptures, is when. Yahushua said to Peter, upon this rock, you we had the revelation, right? Who do you say I am? You are the son, the son, you know, the son of God, the Christ, you know, and, and Yahushua said to him, Blessed are you, Bar Jonah, because man has not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. And your name is Peter. That's when he changed his name. Uh, you know, you know, your name will be Cephas upon a rock, and upon this rock, I will build my church. And that's how you get a lot of misconceptions on, oh, it's about Peter. And Peter went on to be Saint Peter and 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 disciples of saints and, and yada 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 and all this and the Roman Catholic Church and all of this stuff starts coming in. And it's like, mm, um, we need to have understanding, you know. Um, that's what Yahushua did not mean that upon Peter he's going to build his church. You know, um, so we we need to be very careful in our understanding and handling of the word. Um, again, be in your word for yourself, right? If you need help, then there are help. There are, you know, there is help. You know, um, hopefully you do have people, hopefully uh, around you that are Christian, um, that are followers of the way, the true way. Hopefully you have a uh, uh, Brothers and sisters, you know, even in the congregation and all that. But what I would always say is don't be so quick to be a part of organized religion in that sense. Um, if you've come to faith in Yahusha as your savior, as your Messiah, then don't be so quick to join the church. Um, be have a because it's a relationship it's a covenant it's a relation a covenant relationship it um so just be content to be in your word to pray and to ask questions you know um and all of these things so i just pray that that blessed you i pray um that you have a blessed rest of the week uh, start of a new week and you know, as my wife and I just continue to prepare our hearts and minds for Shavuot on, on Friday, May 26th, that we will come together and just uh, break bread and what, what have you and, and just gather in one accord, um, even as in, in Acts 2, what they did at, at Pentecost. Yeah, well, one accord, right, in agreement, all met in one place, Um and we're just waiting, right, for for what Yahushua had promised. So um, let's just um, wait for that, right? And um, again, just walk in obedience. And again, spiritual disciplines, be in your word, pray daily, you know, um, fast, you know, fast as well. And um Again, just I hope that I brought some clarity with what paganism is and all that. Again, you could do the research yourself, you know, and, and the Egyptian culture, um, um, Romans, and, and all this, all paganism. It's all paganism. 
um, and the ways and the customs in which they follow their gods. Um, you know, and, and all these you know, and, and and just beware of universalism, where they say all roads lead to Rome and all roads lead to God, and 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 that's not true. What do you mean, God? What God are you serving? Because anyone could say again, God. If you look, at, you know, how they've changed Yahusha's name to in from the Greek to uh, German to English. This is Jesus. That's how you get Jesus, Isis, which which is translated Jesus. And, and all of these things, like who, no one else in history, no figure in history has had their names translated so much or changed so much. Why Jesus, you know, um, and, and and all of these things. So it's like, it's a lot, you know, what Jesus are you talking about? What God are you talking about? You know, um, and all of these things, you know, they, they, they most likely be talking about a different God, you know, or at least a God that they have crafted. In, in their own minds or whatever, and uh, put put him into a box, you know. So I just pray that that bless you, and uh, we'll see you next week, and we'll talk a, a little bit about Hellenization, you know, just like what what that is, and um, how how the Greek culture has infiltrated and hijacked also the faith, you know. So I just pray. That, that bless you in the name of Yahushua Hamashiach, and we'll just um, sign off and just bless you as well. Um, Adonai, may Adonai bless you and keep you. May Adonai make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May Adonai turn his face toward you and grant you shalom. God bless you all in the name of Yahushua. I love you all. Mm -hmm.